This is a short presentation to discuss disability retirement as it applies to members of the police and firemen's retirement system. As with any of these presentations, it is not designed to be a replacement for any information on our website or other publications. It is simply meant as a general overview. If you need more information on disability retirement, please visit our website or contact our office. Information on, on disability retirement can be found on fact sheet number 16. All disability retirement applications must be submitted online using the Member Benefits Online System or MBOSS. You also are responsible for submitting all supporting hospital and physician records on paper. We require two forms of medical documentation, and this will all be kept confidential and only, and only be used by the Board of Trustees. It can take between six and eight months to process a disability retirement. And in order to be eligible for disability retirement, you must terminate all retirement system covered employment prior to your retirement date. For ordinary disability retirement, a member must be considered in service at the time of filing. In service means that the member or the employer was making pension contributions at the time of filing. They also are required to have at least four or more years of New Jersey service credit, but that does not include time that has been purchased from out-of-state military or U.S. government, and of course they must be considered permanently and totally disabled for their job title. As previously mentioned, it is your responsibility to provide any and all medical reports or evidence on file that support your disability. If that documentation is not sufficient to support the claim, you will be required to be examined by a physician selected by the retirement system. This will be at no cost to you and will be scheduled at a doctor that is convenient to where you live. Just a little tip, if at all possible, try to send as much or all of your medical documentation in at one time. And you may, if it's possible, want to hand deliver it to our office. For those that qualify for ordinary disability, the annual benefit calculation is equal to 40% of your final compensation, which is the salary upon which contributions were based during the, during the last 12 months of service. There's no minimum or maximum age. So if we took somebody who was making $65,000 a year and they were approved for ordinary disability, they would receive $26,000 per year or $2,167 per month. As far as these benefits payments, they are not going to be reduced by any Social Security, workers' compensation, or private insurance benefits that may be payable. However, it is possible that a workers' compensation award may be reduced based on the ordinary disability pension. Ordinary disability is subject to federal tax to the same extent as is a regular pension benefit, but it is not subject to New Jersey state income tax until you reach age 65 if you are still living in New Jersey at that time. For accidental disability, you also must be a member in service at the time that you file. You will be required to take an independent medical examination and you again must provide any and all medical reports to support your disability. Basic qualifications for accidental disability is that you are totally and permanently disabled for your job and that was a result of a traumatic event that occurred during and as a direct result of carrying out your regular or assigned job duties. In addition, you only have five years from the date of the accident in which to file an application. For accidental disability, your disability must have been the direct result of a traumatic event. That was redefined a few years ago by the courts as an occurrence that is identifiable as to time and place, undesigned and unexpected, caused by circumstances external to the member, not the result of a pre-existing condition. It occurred during and as a result of, result of the member's regular or assigned duties, was not the result of a member's willful negligence, and of course results in the permanent and total incapacitation. If you were to qualify for accidental disability, the benefit calculation is equal to two-thirds of your annual salary on which pension contributions were being made at either the time 
of retirement or the date of the traumatic event, whichever provides the higher benefit. So, for instance, we'll take our $65,000 final compensation again, and in, in this case, they would receive $43,355 a year or $3,612 each month. In this case, if you are receiving a periodic workers' compensation settlement, your accidental disability retirement benefit will be reduced dollar for dollar by the periodic benefits paid after your retirement date. However, it is not reduced by Social Security or private insurance benefits, and it is considered as exempt from federal taxes and will also be exempt from New Jersey state income tax until age 65 if you're still living in New Jersey at that time. As with any police and fire retirement, there is a surviving spouse or partner benefit, which is equal to 50% of your final compensation, plus an additional 15% of final compensation to one eligible child, or 25% split between two or more children. You'll find more information about survivor benefits in our survivor benefit presentation. There is also a paid-up group life insurance benefit, which will be paid upon the death of a police and fire retiree. For disability retirement, that number is three and a half times the final compensation until they reach age 55, and one half of the final compensation thereafter. That amount can be converted prior to age 55 to a higher amount if more insurance is needed. You can find more information about group life insurance in our group life insurance presentation. As I mentioned at the outset, if you need more information about disability retirement, you can see fact sheet number 16 on our website, or you can contact our office. Thank you very much.